Ooh, it's such a good movie. Have you seen the movie? Anybody in here seen the movie? All right. Well, great. Uh, we should have brought popcorn. That was uh, making me really hungry for popcorn. We love the Avenger-type movies. Uh, the Marvel movies are a big hit in our household. About the only ones we can't watch are Deadpool, for obvious reasons. they just not the right kind of vibe for our family. But we do like the Marvel movies, and apparently you guys do as well. You've gone to see it. And over the last 10 years, they've made billions of dollars off of us because we like those types of movies. Today we start our series called At the Movies, where we're going to be looking at God and, and just uh, how is God showing up in movies, what does culture uh, say, how are there spiritual truths in there that we can talk about here on Sunday. We do this about every June, and uh, we have um, really four great movies lined up where we're going to be bringing up uh, some pretty great topics in here, some that are pretty culturally relevant. We'll talk more about next week's movie uh, here at the end of the message um, and just getting you prepared for that. Uh, but yeah, the Avengers movie, great stuff. I, I don't know, uh, who are your favorite Marvel characters? Who are your favorite Avenger type people? Who do you really like? Come on, shout it out. Captain, who, who, America. Captain America, that's right. Who else? Black Panther. Okay, Black Panther. Man, that movie was huge. People love that one. What else? Thor. 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 Yeah, Thor. That's a good one. Anybody else like, just three? There's only three people in here that like, nobody likes Spider-Man? Nobody? All right. Well, I asked this question. I was working on my sermon, and my daughters, two of my daughters were actually sitting around the table, and I asked them, uh, just those two, hey, who do you like? I just wanted to kind of get their answer to the question. Uh, Mia was the first one to chime in. She likes Spider-Man. And I said, oh, that's great. Why do you like Spider-Man? Because he's cute, she said. <laughs> because he's cute. Hey, that makes sense. You know, she's 15. Uh, I get it. Like, that's how it is. So I asked my other daughter, my oldest daughter, who's more mature and really into the Marvel movies, like, who does she like? And she said, Captain America. And I go, oh, okay, like, why? Because he's cute. That's what she said. I have failed as a parent. That's it. He's cute. Uh, who do I like? I like Iron Man. Anybody else like Iron Man? I like Iron Man. Not because he's cute, but because of his personality. They are not just objects to me. They are not. I like them for many more reasons than that. How did these superheroes get their power? Do you know? How'd they get them? They got them in a variety of different ways. Spider-Man, for example, uh, he was bit by the radioactive spider, and so he had that happen to him. Captain America, a science experiment, gave him his powers. Iron Man, technology. The Hulk, gamma radiation. We all know that from uh, uh, the TV show growing up. Gamma rays gave it to him. Uh, Black Panther, he gets this, like, heart-shaped fruit, and this makes him powerful along with technology. Uh, Thor be was born a god, and he uses enhanced power through his hammer, or in this movie, his axe, you know, it gives him this uh, bolstered power and, and authority. Uh, some were born powerful. Some of these individuals were born powerful. Others became powerful through adversity. Uh, some grew powerful through their experience. And some were given power by the gods. A lot of variety on how they even got the various powers that they have. Uh, this morning, we are going to look at the fact that you in here have superpowers and you might not even realize it. You have superpowers, and I'm going to walk through some of the powers that you have as an individual, and then we're going to talk about what are we going to do with the powers that we have been gifted or that we have learned over the years. So let me just pray. God, um, I pray that you would help people in here to realize how powerful they truly are. And God, set us free, God, to use these powers for you and for your good and for the good of others in the world. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So I just want to let you know that you have innate powers inside of you that you are given at birth. You just are powerful because you are a human being and because you were created as a powerful being. You're very, very powerful. You were gifted power by your creator at birth. And you are uniquely gifted. And you possess innate talents and abilities. 
What makes you you is as unique as your fingerprints and as your DNA. I realized early on in life that I had some powers that I, I mean, it just like hit me one day that I had powers. And I was a little boy. I mean, I, I remember very clearly. My parents uh, bought me a fishbowl with some goldfish inside of it. And I realized that I had the innate power to train fish. I haven't told people this before. This is my first time letting people know. Uh, but I could actually train fish to dance, to break dance. It sounds funny, doesn't it? That sounds a little odd, but I totally learned it. So I would get a little piece of cardboard, and I would set it next to the fishbowl, because you need cardboard to break dance. You've got to have it. And I would get my boom box, and I would put on some wrap on there. I would reach in the bowl, and I would pull the goldfish out, and on command, when I set it down, he would break dance on the cardboard. It's amazing. I could only get them to break dance for about 45 seconds, and they would only do it one time, but they would break dance like crazy. Apparently, they have the innate ability to break dance. Who knew? I did. I knew. My parents knew that I had this power, so they quit buying me goldfish as well. <laughs> parents who have multiple children, if you have multiple children like we do, you realize, moms and dads, that your children were given different abilities, powers, if you will, at birth. Uh, even if they are the product biologically of you and you have multiple children that um, were created by you in the same fashion, you can see that these kids came out different, that God was involved in creating them uniquely powerful. Teachers on the front lines of development have an eye for spotting hidden powers and talents in children that they get to teach and lead. Your friends value your uniqueness and help you find the courage to express your God-given talents and abilities that you have. And God is working to unleash this power that he has placed inside of you to utilize the power that you have been gifted from birth to make a difference in the world and in the lives of other people. In our society, we tend to celebrate a limited set, just a real small set of innate abilities and talents. We hold these things up on a pedestal and we worship them. And they are something that we long for. However, far more tragic than just celebrating a limited number of innate powers and abilities in human beings is when we as individuals choose to discount or hide the powers that God has given us because they don't match up to what we think they should be or what really ideal is. Right now, there, is a, um, there are some worldwide competitions going on. If you were watching sports yesterday in the morning on CBS, you would have noticed a, a regional event that was taking place. Uh, right now, this season of, of the year um, is not only... For baseball, um, it's not only for the Stanley Cup, but this is also the season of the year where the CrossFit Games are being put together. I know you probably don't follow much of the CrossFit Games. It's not really all that popular just yet. It just is starting to come into the mainstream. I mean, the WNBA is still more popular than, uh, than CrossFit, but I, me and my friends, we're pretty into it, and so it's kind of fun to watch and see what they're doing. It's a sport. Uh, that, that we love. And I was watching one of the regional events uh, at the beginning of, of the week. And as I was watching, they had this, set, this section when they had all of the athletes lined up on their starting line. And uh, they were panning the crowd and, or panning that group of people. And I realized right then and there that I was never going to be on that, on that line. Most of them were around six foot tall. Most of them were close to 200 pounds. Most of, most of them had muscles. And this is just the women that I'm talking about <laughs> right there. And I looked at my puny little body and I thought, oh, this is horrible. Like, I am not gifted for this. I'm not gifted for football. I'm not gifted for the NBA. 
Sure, there are outliers like small people that make it into those sports, but it's very rare. And if you're not six foot, don't try to make it to the NBA. You're probably not going to make it. Crushing your dreams right here in church, I am. Um, small people unite. Small. No? All right. I could let this stop me from doing the sport that I love, or even worse, outside of the sport, sports world. You could allow your inability to distract you from leaning into or unleashing the God-given talents and abilities that he has given you. To wish God made me different is a common struggle that we all face. But we cannot allow the power that we do not have to minimize or negate the power that we have been given by God. So I want to encourage you to embrace your innate power. Write this verse down, Psalm 139, verse 14. You were fearfully and wonderfully made. You. The way you were created, there is something powerful and unique about you. You have to learn to embrace your innate power. Uh, second kind of superpower that you have is experiential power. Um, you have gained power over your lifetime as you have experienced things, if you have evaluated them, if you have indeed learned from them. There are certain things that you have done over your lifetime that has empowered you and it makes you more powerful than some other individual who has not learned them or gone through them. We just hired a new uh, student ministry pastor. His name is Javon. We announced it on uh, social media and on email this last week. He actually starts tonight. He'll be here for the high school ministry. He's wrapping up ministry at his last church on Sunday morning. Um, and doing some other things here in the month of June. He'll be here full-time uh, starting in, in the month of July. We're excited about that. But during the interview process and the process where we were trying to discern whether or not God wanted him to be on our team, um, Carlisle and I were just taking different turns, hanging out with him to try to get to know him better. And him and I met, uh, and his fiance, we met down at a coffee shop on Central Avenue called Lux. And uh, it's where all the hip kids go, apparently. And so I, I went down there in my very unhip outfit and walked in there and grabbed uh, coffee. And we had a just delightful time. And as we were leaving, um, I was saying goodbye in the overcrowded parking lot. And he walked to his car. They walked to their car. And I looked out in the street. And there were eight people standing around a, a, a tire in the street. Eight people. Eight individuals. Uh, two males and six females were standing around this car looking at the back tire. Now, I thought to myself, I bet you that tire's flat even though I can't see it because why else would you be standing around looking at it, right? That didn't make any sense. So I yelled to them, do you need help? And the owner of the car, she yelled back quickly, yes, we do. So I walked over and... Uh, I sized up the situation. There were four lug nuts on the ground, two still on the car, and the flat tire was still on the car, spare, jack, but nobody knew what to do next. <laughs> nobody knew. So the first thing I did, I said, would you like me to help you? I wanted to ask. You know, I didn't want to just take over, right? So would you like me to help you? Uh, and they said, well, if you can, that'd be great. Uh, the second thing I did is I went to the two males and I said, could I have your man card? You're obviously not using it. Could I just please take them from you? You don't need them anymore. And so I gathered their man card and put them in my pocket. <laughs> it was embarrassing. It was really embarrassing. Please, dads, teach your boys how to change a tire for crying out loud. You know, um, enough of that. So I... I got down and I took off the remaining lug nuts because I know how to take tight lug nuts off. You stand on the tire iron, you use your fat body as opposed to your strength to do it, right? And they popped right off. And the owner of the car was hilarious. The whole time I was changing the tire, very rapidly by the way, very rapidly. <laughs> she said, you are Captain America. <laughs> I'm not lying, she was saying it. I didn't stop her. I didn't. I didn't. I let her keep saying it. She kept saying it over and over. How can you do that so fast? You're like a superhero. I'm not lying. She's saying this to me, right? And I could just see these 
two males just shrinking. You know, like, like, right. And I said, no, I don't have any superpowers. I've just done this before, right? That's the only difference between me and the manicured men that were there is that I had done it before, correct? Power, yes. Silly illustration, absolutely. Did I have to tell it? 100% I had. I had to tell it. The scripture calls this learned experiential power wisdom. Write down Proverbs chapter 8, verses 12 through 19. Proverbs chapter 8, actually all of Proverbs talks about wisdom. But in Proverbs, you are going to see that as you go through life, if you will actually learn from life, if you will actually gather the experience, bring it inside of you, evaluate it, and incorporate it into your life, you can gain tremendous power in your lifetime. But listen, just because you go through something doesn't make you more powerful in a good way. You could go through something, not learn a single thing from it, and it actually makes you less powerful or powerful to do the wrong thing in the future. You have to be able to evaluate it. You have to be able to incorporate it into your life. And you have to be able to learn from it and move forward. This is experiential power. On our journey, we need to pick up wisdom from the side of the road. Far too often, we pick up the hitchhikers who carry bigger signs in Sharpie, like hurt, regret, anger, disappointment, bitterness, or fear, and we leave wisdom on the side of the road. We miss an opportunity to grow in our experiential power. You and I don't have to go through an experience to glean wisdom. We can glean wisdom from somebody else's experience as well. I can learn from you. I don't have to go through it myself if I will pay attention and take your power and bring it into my life. This is Spider-Man and Iron Man in the movie, right? This is how this works, right? There's uh, Spider-Man gets better faster because Iron Man is investing in him and helping him to move forward, right? This is just something that we all see in life. Experience is still the power that is being harnessed there. And a little subset of that, let me just take time to talk about a certain kind of experience that you could learn from, and that is scar power. Not star power, but scar power. You can, like most of the Avengers, discover power in your life through adversity, a negative experience. Many people with a superhero backstory have lives full of pain. Something tragic happened in their lives that could be viewed as a negative, or it could be something that unleashes great power in their lives moving forward. It was unexpected, it was painful, and life-altering, but it can be harnessed. These scars can be harnessed for great good in the world. Do me a favor, Luke chapter 22. If you have a Bible or your phone, um, I'll pull it up on my phone so I know how long it takes you to get there. Uh, Luke uh, chapter 22, go ahead and turn there. In Luke 22, you're going to run into verses 31 through 32, and we're just going to take a look at what Jesus has to say uh, to Peter. Luke 22, 31 and 32. All right, I'm there. Are you there? Tracking with me? This is right at the end of Jesus' life. He's about ready to be crucified. He's hanging out with his 12 homies, and they are talking about what's coming up, and Peter's making big claims about how he's never going to fall away from Jesus, uh, and Jesus says, Simon, Simon, that's what he called Peter when he really wanted his attention, right? Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to shift all of you, to sift all of you as wheat. Okay, if Jesus says to me, the devil himself wants to mess with you, I think I'd be a little, like, anxious about that. I mean, I'd like to think that I would totally man up and go, oh, yeah, bring it, baby. Like, bring it. Devil who? I got this. Like, I'd like to think I'd have confidence, but I'd probably be pretty nervous. Uh, and then I'd gain some confidence when Jesus said the next, start of the next verse, verse 32, but, like if he said, but, I'd be like, oh, okay, good. <laughs> Calm down, Joe. Calm down. Uh, I would want him to say something like, but don't worry. I got this. 
or but, don't worry, he can't hurt you. Or maybe, but don't worry, um, uh, don't worry, I took care of it, uh, I'm keeping him away. But that's not what Jesus says. He says, but I have prayed for you. I've prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, what does he want him to do? Strengthen your brothers. Well, we don't know all the reasons why Jesus allowed Peter to go through what he did. We do know one. Jesus allowed Satan to sift Peter so that he could have power to relate to the broken and strengthen them in their time of need. Ladies and gentlemen, your scars are not pretty, but they are also powerful. You know what it is like, and that is a powerful phrase. So don't waste it. Scar power. God often uses our deepest pain as a launching pad for our greatest calling. God often uses our deepest pain as a launching pad for our greatest calling. You may wish you never went through what you went through. And for good reason. It stunk. It was hard. It was painful. It was brutal. It was ugly. It left a big scar. But on the other side of it, if you can realize and recognize how much power you were able to gain from it and not allow it to have the power of bitterness and anger and even regret in your life, but allow it to turn around and become something that is useful to God in the world, man, that is a very powerful place to be. So question for you on these three powers, what will you do with the power that you have been given? What will you do with your power. You can do any one of a number of things uh, with the power um, that you've been given. You can do um, any one of a number of things with the power that you've been given by birth, the power that you've learned from experience, the power that you've learned from pain, the scars that you have. You can do a lot of things with them and just like the superhero guys could do a lot of things with them and we see their struggles play out as part of the movies from time to time. One thing that some superheroes do, which you could do as well, is you could go into hiding with your power. You could think your powers that you've been given are not really all that good or they're embarrassing or you, know, you don't know how to harness them yet and so you just withdraw from people and get away from people and, and you just go into hiding. You can cover up the power that God has gifted you. You can. Or you could go rogue with it. Many of the villains in the, script, in, in the movies have similar beginnings as the heroes. Both have gone through tragedy and received great power from it, but the difference between the hero and the villain isn't what they went through, it's what they did with it once they got it, or once they went through it. So too, you can take any of the powers that you have been given and use them for yourself. You can use them for selfish reasons, and use them even to hurt others in the process. Or, and this is the best option, this is a preferred option, you surrender the power that you have been given for the greater good, for God's purposes in the world. Every superhero becomes truly super when they harness their power for something greater than themselves. And this is true for you and I as well. You and I will only reach our fullest potential when we learn to surrender the power that God has given us, whether it's through birth or whether it's through experience or whether it's through a scar. Only when we surrender these fully to God will we become all that God wanted us to become. And the crazy and unbelievable thing is when we surrender this power to God, God increases that power in our lives that you can have God's power in your life is a pretty amazing thing. That you, as a human being, can channel God's power into the world. We don't really have time to develop all of this now, but can I just give you some passages of Scripture to reflect on this week? Jot these ones down. Ephesians 
chapter 1, where Paul prays that, that our eyes will be open to how much power God really has given us. Romans chapter 8, where we will see the power of the Holy Spirit and what it can do in our lives. And Acts chapter 1, where we see in Acts chapter 1 that from the very start of the church, God's power has been promised to be given to his people. As you read, you will see that because of Jesus and what he has done, you have more power than you will ever need. You will have power to be free from temptation. You will no longer have to follow the ways down the uh, down negative temptation road. You will no longer have to become somebody that just chooses to sin, that God can empower you to break free from those and to live a life that is pleasing to him. You will learn that you can have tap into the power to get your eyes off of yourself and onto others in service, that God can actually transform you on the inside so that you can see people differently. And you will see that, that God has given you all the power that you need to do the things that he has called you to do. God has never called anybody to do something that he has not also promised them the power to carry it out and more power than they could ever need. So what are you going to do with this power? And are you tapping into the power or are you, I don't know, just being a religious person or just doing religious things? Or are you tapping into the power of, your, of the things that, you, that God has given you and allowing God's power to ignite those things into the world. Two ways to tap in the power. First, you have to surrender your life. You have to surrender your life to God. You have to surrender yourself in a one-time kind of a way where you just admit that you've blown it, that you've distorted the gifts that God has given you, that you've done what the Scripture calls a sin, where you, have, you are just not really, you are not connected to God at all. So you admit that you've blown it, you believe that Jesus has come after you, and you just surrender yourself to him. Just like Chris and I did almost 24 years ago, there was a day where we got married. There was a wedding day. So too there needs to be a day where you just say, God, I surrender myself to you. Right here, right now, I give you myself. But there's also a surrender that happens on a daily basis where from the time that you wake up until you go to sleep at night, you just constantly keep saying, God, my life is yours. I surrender all that I am to you. My scars, my talents, my giftedness, my experiences, I surrender all to you. Your will be done in my life and through my life. Let me just pray for us. God, I just pray that you would help us to be men and women um, who seek after you and who surrender ourselves to you and allow you to use our power in our lives and the power that you've given us for your good in the world. Please, God, do this, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, um, we're going to call for the ushers. They're going to come forward and they're going to grab um, your communication cards uh, could you hold off on that video? Uh, we're going to uh, call for the uh, ushers to come forward and grab your communication cards and your offering. And while they do, we're going to be playing um, a little bit of a snippet of a, a movie that we're going to be going to on Friday night. Um, of all the movies that we're doing, this one's going to be um, one that's going to stir up a lot of things inside of us. Um, in our culture right now, there's a lot of gender issues that are pretty prevalent. And uh, I saw that there was a movie coming out that brought up the gender issue, and I've not, I've not seen it. I know it's coming out. It's coming out right before we, we give the message next week, um, but I'm going to be teaching from God's perspective on gender issues next week, um, and this is something that I think we should be talking about in church because it's a big deal out in our culture. Uh, by no means am I saying that I agree with everything that's happening in the movie. I haven't even seen it yet, but it's allowing us to have a platform to have a dialogue to talk about gender issues from a biblical perspective. And so I invite you to come watch the movie on Friday night with me and then to be here on Sunday as we unpack uh, gender issues here at church. And moms and dads, just to let you know, 
This is going to be one of those issues that you might want to consider not letting your kids come be a part of. We have a great children's ministry uh, for them, but we're going to be talking about some things in a very blunt and mature way next week. So um, turn your attention to the screen, and Carlisle will wrap up the service for us.